Hey everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical, and our clinic is located here in Ottawa, Canada. Today we're continuing our series on neuromodulators focusing on the crows, and stay with me till the end because I'm gonna share with you how to treat an asymmetrical eyebrow. Let's get into it. All right, so as we begin, let's bring in our assistant, Sarah. Say, hey Sarah, I want you to notice a few things. First of all, the obicularis oculi, which is this huge muscle, the origin starts here goes all the way around. The belly of the muscle, which is the biggest part of the muscle, is right here. And after that, it gets thinner and connects or inserts right back here again. Now, this muscle is bigger than you think. It's not like a Ray-Ban Clubmaster sunglasses where they're pretty small. Think of these more like Ray-Ban aviators, where they're just basically this huge muscle group that's covering much more than the orbital rim. It's covering anywhere from one to 2.5 centimeters beyond the orbital rim. So take that in consideration whenever you're placing your neuromodulators. The other thing I want you to understand is notice the arrows. This is the direction of where the muscle is constricting or flexing, right? So whenever the muscle is flexing, it's doing one of these. And then when it relaxes, it opens up. There are three primary areas where I like to place neuromodulators to address the crows. Number one is going to be right here, right at the lateral canthus. This is where most of your, pro if your product should go because this is the belly of the muscle and this is going to help relax your crow's here. Now, you have two other areas where you might identify some crow's feet and that could be up here or that could be down here. So that's going to be number two and number three. Number two is an interesting one because even if someone doesn't have crow's feet here or lines, what I generally do with most of my female clients and also with my male clients who have some heaviness in the upper eyelid, I tend to place a little bit here because it's going to pin it in its most relaxed position, addressing some of the lines and also helping to open up that eye. So that's number two area. And number three is going to be down here. Right, so these stubborn crows get really tricky. Now, the reason why that's the case is because underneath that big obicularis ocular muscle, which is very thin, is there's a very thick and strong zygomaticus major muscle, which is one of your primary smiling muscles, right? So whenever I smile, I want my eyes to lift, right? There's something called a Duchenne smile. So whenever you smile, you can see I'm smiling with my eyes, right? Now, if I were to place too much neuromodulator here to try and address all those crows, if they were severe, then it would actually seep underneath this muscle, hitting the zygomaticus muscle that's right there. And what it'll do is it'll partially block my smile. And what happens is you end up getting those dead eyes when you smile or from here down when you smile, it looks like this. And you get this heavy shelving and clients generally don't like it. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look natural. So this is where you really have to err on the side of caution whenever you're placing neuromodulator right down here. Now let's talk about dosing. Dosing, by the way, can range anywhere from five to 12 to even up to 20 units per region. And 12 units, by the way, is the standard recommended dose, but it really does depend on what you're looking for. 12 is going to give you the longevity you want, um, but you can also tailor that. So let's give you a little example of what we can do here with 12 units, because I think 12 is a great number for a lot of clients. Basically here, this is the belly of the muscle. This is where you're gonna to wanna to place most of your product. Move one centimeter outside of the orbital rim, and the reason why you wanna do that is because if you place too much inside that one centimeter range, you can cause dry eye and other potential complications. So stay one centimeter out, be safe. Remember that obicularis oculi actually extends 1.5 to two centimeters beyond the orbital rim, so you're gonna be fine, you won't miss it. Now you're gonna place five to seven units right here. And this will be great just to address these. But if you wanna kick up the tail of the eyebrow a little bit or address some of these lines, you're gonna probably place another two to three units up here, which brings us to 10 units. And then after that, whenever you're addressing the lower crows down here, this is where you wanna be careful. You're probably gonna to wanna to place maybe two or three units and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay a little closer to the eye, right at that one centimeter mark. Don't go too low because you don't wanna hit that zygomaticus major muscle, right? And at the same time, you wanna err on the side of caution. If they can handle more later on, you can increase it slightly, but I don't recommend doing too, too much more than that because you don't wanna cause that shelving. All right, so what do you do now if you have a client that comes in with an asymmetrical eyebrow and this is what it looks like at rest? Well, the whole reason why this is happening is primarily because the frontalis, this muscle is a little bit more hyperactive than this side, and that's for the most part. And you can usually tell that whenever you get them to raise their eyebrows, you'll see one or two extra wrinkles compared to this side. So a quick 
you know, a simple fix that you can do to kind of help it out is place one or two units right here extra compared to on this side, and that will help bring this down a bit. Now, if you don't want to bring it down too, too much, what you can also do is help kick this one up a little bit more by placing neuromodulator right here, right along this rim. So what you're gonna do is go right inside the eyebrow, you're gonna place one unit here, another couple units here, and a couple units here. But on this side where it's already elevated, you're not gonna place any neuromodulator up here. You're just gonna start right down here and focus on the lower aspect of the crows because you don't want any additional kick up. That combination of a little extra neuromodulator here, none here, and a couple extra neuromodulators here should help straighten out the eyebrows and give you pretty close to symmetry. All right, so before you go, I'm gonna tell you guys how to treat fine lines underneath the eyes. I know it's not part of the crows, but it's still part of the obicularis oculi, so I'm gonna give this little bonus for you. First of all, it's only going to address fine lines. It's not going to address severe wrinkles underneath there. Um, the other thing too is that not everyone's a candidate. You're going to have to do a skin test to make sure that they have good skin texture and turgor to hold the neuromodulator, right? So if you place one or two units right here, right, then you're, what you're gonna wanna do before is grab the skin, pinch it and pull and let it go. And if you see it relax within three seconds, then it's okay. If it takes longer for three seconds for that skin to fully flatten out, then I wouldn't do it because what they could have is the dreaded lower eyelid ptosis and that's not fun for everyone. Now, the other candidate that I don't recommend doing this for are people who have severe wrinkles and some severe bags underneath the eyes because all that's going to do is it's going to relax it even more and they're gonna get little pouches like little scrotums underneath your eyes and they are going to hate it. You're not gonna be happy either. So I generally don't recommend it. Make sure it's for your candidates who have fine lines and they will love it though. Best of luck. That's it for me today, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. You're not gonna wanna miss it. We're talking about the nose. Believe it or not, you can do a lot of things with neuromodulators around the nose, including bunny lines. You can also help with nasal flaring. You can also help with pores, rosacea, and even spider veins. Stay tuned for that. Until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers.